I'm going to push you into this lake of lava, and it will be fun. Hello everyone, and welcome to a Green Lava Productions tutorial video, and this is going to be an After Effects tutorial, my first After Effects tutorial. And this is going to be covering how I made that cool little lava effect that you saw at the beginning of the video, as well as for the introduction to the video as well. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so here we are in After Effects. Uh, you can tell uh, that this is the composition I used for my example video. Um, and as I play through it here, you can tell that there's a nice lava effect going on which is what I'm going to show you how to do today. Uh, there's a few extra things in this one, um, mainly like this ripple effect going on here, and there might be a little flicker as well going on as well. Um, I may cover those in a separate video, uh, but for, the, for this video, it's just going to be the, the lava effect itself. So let's get started on that. Let's go to Composition, New Composition, and I'm going to name it Lava underscore BKG and I'm gonna make it oh a minute long I mean I know this is close to a minute but I like to be exact and we have got ourselves a new composition the first thing I'm gonna do here is go layer new solid it does not matter what solid it's gonna be so that's just gonna keep it white here for now and I've got a solid right on the bottom okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is under effects and presets here I'm going to type in turbulent noise and you can see it right under here under noise and grain I'm gonna take it here and I'm gonna drag it right on top of my solid and you can see I've got this nice little uh, cloudy effect going on here um, under fractal type I'm gonna change it to swirly there we go that looks nice and you can change all these different things, like under noise type, you can change this to linear, change it to spline, and it all looks fine to me. I'm just gonna change it. I'm gonna keep it at soft linear for now because I'm boring and I like to go with the default a lot. <laughs> um, I'm gonna change my contrast, maybe just a little bit, bring it up just a little. Um, brightness, I'm gonna leave more or less the same at zero. Um, but here's where the fun happens in evolution. I'm gonna set a keyframe at the beginning of my composition here. Make sure my CTI is at the very beginning and I'm going to click my stopwatch for evolution. I'm gonna go all the way to the end of my composition and I'm going to make a new, a, a new keyframe. And the way I'm gonna do that is under my solid, I'm gonna hit the letter U on my keyboard. Um, and what that does is it just reveals every single keyframe. Um, that's applied to this solid. In this case, there's only one, which is this one evolution keyframe. But just for future reference, the, the letter U um, reveals every single keyframe that's applied to something in your timeline, which is really cool. So if you had like a position keyframe or a scale keyframe or whatever, if you had a bunch of different keyframes applied to something, the letter U is going to reveal every single one of them. Um, so that's really cool. So basically I'm just going to take, I'm going to go to the very end of my composition and I'm going to hit a new keyframe here. And right here I'm going to type in uh, 18, I think. I think that's a good number. Hit enter. And when I hit RAM preview, you can tell that there's nice sort of animation going on. And that's basically what, what's going to be the basis for my lava. And you can make this as fast or as slow as you want to. Um, basically when I typed in 18, that just means that it's going to go 18 revolutions. Um, this is just degrees, so I think it's going to go 360 degrees is going to be one revolution. And then another 360 is going to be another. So like if I scroll, you can see 330. And then as soon as it gets to 360, it's just going to change to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. And I have basically this going around 18 times in one minute. Um, if I wanted to make it faster, I would change it to a bigger number. So like if I change it to like 30, hit OK. You can tell that this is very quick. Likewise, if I wanted to make it slower, I could just change this to like 10 or so. And if I hit RAM preview again, you can tell that it's very slow. 
So I'm going to keep it at 18 for now. I think that's a good speed. Okay, cool. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some color correction. Um, and so in my effects and presets, I'm going to type in hue saturation. And I'm going to take that and drag it straight on this solid. And in my hue and saturation, I'm going to make sure I'm in my effect controls panel. I'm going to hit this colorize button here. Um, and you can tell that that basically made this into a color. And you can change this into whatever color you want. Um, I'm just going to change it to... Oh, it doesn't matter. Let's make it a very bright lime green. No, not lime green. Let's make it purple. That'll look good. Yeah! Vikings are doing well right now, so let's keep the spirit going, shall we? I think that looks good. So if we play this, you can tell that it's we've got a nice purple lava, and that's cool. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in invert. And I'm going to throw that on here, and that's just going to basically throw everything I've done out the window. <laughs> I just did it just to fool you. Um, basically, the only reason I did this is because I'm making whatever was black white and whatever was white black or whatever was dark light and whatever was light dark um, example if I turn this on and off you can tell that like this was bright now now it's dark I just find that it it makes this brighter on the whole um, and I just think it's a fun thing to do you don't have to do this if you if you don't want to this is just what I did for my example um, and I'm just going to take my colorize hue and I'm going to reposition it to a point where I can get something close to what I had before. So like that I think would look good. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and type in curves. And I'm just going to throw that right under here. And I'm going to make one plot point in the middle of this graph and sort of move it around back and forth you know you could make it lighter you could make it darker whatever floats your boat man like that I think looks good I make another one here and again this step is wholly unnecessary or not it's all up to you this is just what I did for mine pretty much Okay, and I think this looks good. The only thing I'm going to do is I might make it just a little bit brighter up here in the turbulent noise. Um, just to make it a little stand out a little more. And I have to go backwards because the invert is going to make it so that it's the opposite of whatever it is. So I have to make it darker to make it brighter, if that makes any sense. So I think that looks good. We've got a nice purpley lava going on. I think that looks nice. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bright spot in the middle of this and then have it so that it darkens off um, towards the outside. If you take a look at my example, you can see that there's like a bright spot here and then it just sort of fades off into darkness um, the further away from the middle you go. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to layer new solid. Um, it, again, it doesn't matter what color the solid is, but I'm going to make it black just because I like to see diversity in my project panel because I'm a progressive thinker ladies and gentlemen and I'm gonna go up to effects and presets and I'm gonna type in gradient ramp you can see gradient ramp right under generate here I'm gonna take that and drag it straight in here um, I'm gonna make this a radial gra uh, ra ugh, radial ramp okay so you can see that there's a nice radial gradient going on here. Um, I'm going to take this part, uh, see these little crosshairs here that show up are a good way for you to um, control the gradient uh, when you use this effect. And I like to use them a lot. You can do the same thing by just moving it back and forth here in the effect controls panel, but I like to use this better because I'm a very visual person. So I'm gonna move that here 
And then I'm going to take the end one, which is kind of hidden under here, but it's right here. I'm going to take it and move it out just a little bit, like so. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm going to swap my colors. And what that did is it made it so it was bright in the middle and dark on the outside rather than vice versa. Um, I think that looks good. I might drag this out just a little bit more like so and it's just a matter of eyeballing it and seeing what you like the best um, the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, under here my white solid which is where I've got my basis for the lava I'm gonna rename that actually to lava underscore BKG I thought I'd already done that but BKG not B can't type today okay so I'm gonna so I know what I'm dealing with here. I'm going to take this and where it's this um, track mat here, I'm going to click Al Al Luma mat. And basically what that does is it, um, it goes off what's going on in this layer here. Basically what's, what's whitish or what's the most white is going to be what's bright and what's dark is going to be dark, if that makes any sense. So if I, uh, Unclick the eyeball here, you can tell that, you know, it's bright here and it's dark over on this side. I can change that gradient around if I want to. Um, and you can tell that this bright spot just follows whatever the, um, the gradient is. So I'm going to keep it right in the middle. If you want to keep yours weight like up to the side somewhere, over here, whatever, it's totally up to you. And if you, if you want to make it so that it's not completely black on the outside, if you want to keep it so that you can see part of the lava on the outside, just take this, and instead of perfect black, you can change it to a gray. And you can see, you can tell that you can see more of um, your lava. So that's good. We've got a nice bright spot in here. It's subtle, but it's nice nonetheless. All right. And I'm just going to do some finishing touches here. I'm just going to sort of soften this a little bit so it looks a little a little cleaner. Um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go layer new solid. And keeping in the purple theme, I'm going to make this a purple solid. It's more of a magenta. This is probably okay. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is up here uh, in my shapes, I'm going to go to ellipse tool. And I'm going to draw... A nice oval right across my screen and I'm gonna reposition that a little bit so it's perfectly in the middle that's good um, I'm going to go to the feather of this and I'm going to increase it just a bit I think that looks good and then in my blending mode here I'm gonna change it to oh I don't know S soft light no looking for lighter oh here it is lighter color yeah that looks okay I'm going to go into the opacity and just make it a little less noticeable. That's good. And again, this step is completely unnecessary, but you can do it if you want to. That's what I did for mine. Um, yeah, that looks okay. And the last step I'm going to do is I'm going to make a vignette. So layer, new, solid. This one should be a black solid. Hit OK. Um, go into opacity and I'm just gonna make it a little less so you can see what you're doing. Um, I'm gonna use the same mask that was under here so I'm gonna go ahead and if I just hit M you can tell where the mask is. I'm just gonna take that command C to copy and command V to paste it straight onto here and I am going to invert it here so I'm gonna invert that. That's good and you can tell that there's a nice little vignette on the outside here. What I might do is I might just lower the opacity of this so you can see a little bit more of the lava. And if I ram preview, we've got a nice, dark, flowing lava lake. Cool. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and stay tuned for more because there will be more to come. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.